Hello guys, welcome back, my name is Andrei. In this quick video, we'll look into what options we have in Streamlit when we want to have functionality of uh, image data annotation. And actually there are two out-of-the-box uh, Streamlit uh, components available uh, for image data annotation. Uh, you can grab them and use. Uh, also, all the source code is available, and if you need to do any modification for the for the source code to add the functionality, you can uh, you can do it also yourself. And uh, the first one is uh, Streamlit um, a drawable canvas component, and the second one is called Streamlit uh, image uh, labeling component. And uh, we'll look into both of them today, and I'll show how to run them on your own environment uh, in development mode so that you could add uh, the stuff yourself and uh, have, yeah, build uh, whatever functionality you want. So let's uh, jump to to my screen and let's see. So the first one is, as I said, extremely Drawable Canvas. Uh, this is quite a popular component, uh, uh, almost 300 stars. and. Uh, it, it, it's uh, it's implemented on top of uh, Fabric GS, uh, and just a quick recap uh, about Streamlit components. So Streamlit components uh, can be implemented um, using React and uh, whatever JavaScript libraries are available. You can use inside that Streamlit component. Then this component is wrapped uh, with uh, uh, Python class, uh, which uh, helps to integrate the component inside uh, Streamlit application environment. And at the end, when you run this component inside the Streamlit application, you can uh, actually uh, pass uh, variables, variable values inside the component, and you can read uh, back the results from the component. And uh, it runs in a separate iframe within a uh, main Streamlit application. And uh, yeah, you can uh, integrate component into the stream Streamlit application UI layout, and uh, it works uh, quite well. And uh, yeah, the, the strong the, the strong point that you can uh, pass uh, data inside and outside, so it can it can behave just like any other uh, streamlit component. Okay, so in in this way, uh, both um, annotation uh, components are implemented, and actually both of them, the, this drawable canvas and um, image label, the both of them are using uh, Fabric GS library. Uh, it, uh, in its core implementation, but th there are a few differences, and uh, I think you should give it a try to both of the components and see which one uh, works better for your use cases, which uh, comes closer to whatever you need, and then uh, you can take the component as a starting point and modify it uh, and uh, to your own functionality, whatever is required. Yeah, so let's see what uh, what's the difference between uh, between uh, between these two components. Let's switch uh, to development environment and first of all we look into the uh, drawable canvas. And uh, yeah, before I start the application, I I should also mention that um, uh, both of the components are published. Uh, in inside uh, uh, in, in a list of Python libraries, and you can install them with uh, both of them with uh, just command through command line. And uh, if you go back to uh, readme file over here, you see installation pip install streamlit drawable canvas. The the same thing is for this one pip install streamlit image label. But that's if. Uh, this works if you are completely happy with the functionality which is provided and you you want to use all the out-of-the-box functionality. In case you want to add your own stuff into component, then you would need to run uh, the component locally and uh, you should be able to change the source code and test it inside your local Streamlit application. So I cloned the uh, uh, GitHub repo for Streamlit drawable canvas and then I created in, under the root directory, my own uh, Python script, and I just copy pasted few uh, elements uh, from the default uh, from the default description of the stream drawable canvas. I'm passing some um, information about the colors, uh, about the boxes, and so on. And at that, I'm reading uh, result and printing out a table uh, with the information about the boxes that was uh, are drawn on the canvas. By the way, uh, Streamlit drawable com component it allows uh, 
quite a lot of options for drawing, uh, not only um, rectangles, but also you could draw lines, uh, curves, um, polygons, uh, circles, and so on. So it works. It would work great if you have a requirement to draw different type of uh, shapes uh, on top of canvas. Right, and uh, very important thing, uh, well, if you want to <clears throat> run the component uh, locally for the development purposes, then you would install. You would go to the front end, and you would install all the uh, node dependencies. And this is also described in the readme file. But this one uh, uh, thing that you should um, keep in mind, um, you should uh, up upgrade TypeScript um, uh, version that is being used. Because at least uh, in my case, when I was able, uh, I run npm install, and then I was uh, running npm uh, run, um, I was getting the error uh, related to the TypeScript. And obviously, uh, and this error was coming from the fabric JS. So obviously, the version of the TypeScript that was listed inside Package JSON was too old for the Fabric JS for some reason, so I upgraded TypeScript version to the latest, and then I executed npm install once again, and then uh, error was gone. Uh, and the same, this this is true for both uh, for drawable canvas and for this uh, other component which is called Streamlit Image Labeling, the same error. And um, I both of them I upgraded to the latest uh, TypeScript, and I run npm install once again, and error was was gone. So then there is um, uh, init, uh, init script, and this is uh, a core concept for Streamlit components uh, in general, and uh, it acts as a, a wrapper and that helps to integrate uh, React JavaScript uh, uh, code. Uh, it helps to run it inside um, the Streamlit application and not only run, but also pass data inside the component and read data from the component when uh, life cycle executes and you get back a uh, response on the streamlit uh, server side yeah and the main the main thing is inside um, here inside uh, drawable uh, canvas uh, typescript file uh, it's not too big and the main logic uh, at least in, in for this component is inside uh, here uh, you'll see that there's a command which says that this code updates canvas is selected tool. So whatever tool like a rectangle, circle, or polygon, or, or um, uh, line, or whatever you, you select, then uh, you draw this. Um, uh, user would be able to draw this kind of uh, curve on on top of canvas. And there are listeners like canvas on, mouse up, uh, canvas on, mouse double click, and um, and so on. So yeah. Uh, this functionality comes from Fabric JS, and um, there's not nothing much uh, about the Streamlit. It's uh, the main um, drawing functionality is implemented from uh, using li uh, Fabric JS library, and you can go and check uh, Fabric JS documentations if you want to documentation if you want to add more stuff uh, and um, into the component and uh, yeah, maybe you would like to change the color of. Um, the object that you are drawing when it's active or you want to uh, rotate the object uh, and so on or maybe you don't want to allow to move the object um, on uh, horizontally only vertically and so on so all of this kind of functionality can be done through fabric js and you can add it here right and let, let's see how it runs so let's uh, yeah because i'm running as i mentioned before in development mode so that any changes I do for the component itself, for example, any change that I do in drawable canvas uh, TypeScript file, they'll be available uh, for the application. So in this case, I need to run uh, node, uh, node application and then Streamlit application. So I, I do npm run start. So this inside the front end folder. So this will start the uh, component itself as individual application. And later, when when your job is done, when the component is completed, you can build uh, the component. You'll get uh, static uh, build uh, files, and then uh, you could integrate those uh, build files directly inside Streamly application. So there would be no need to run two uh, two processes, or you can publish your uh, updated component uh, as a Python library and consume it as a Python library if you want. Okay, so 
the server is running and now let's start uh, streamlit application okay it's, it opens okay and here we go this is the uh, component is rendered we got default image and now <clears throat> Uh, in main script, I set uh, I, I set configuration to use only the rectangle, for example. So I'm drawing some rectangle, rectangle, and I'm getting back the response. And if I draw again, I'll get back the another response. And th th those buttons are coming from the component. And this is like a stripped down example. If you check default uh, example from uh, drawable component you'll have options there to uh, change the drawing tool from rectangle to circle uh, and so on uh, but here in this example i'm focusing only on a rectangle this way uh, if you have um, input data for the rectangles in this case uh, uh, you can draw them out of the box on component load so then you would get uh, rectangles visible uh, instantly when component is displayed, when image is displayed. And also, uh, if you draw on top something, uh, user is drawing something on top of the canvas additionally, then you can uh, save this data. And later, um, uh, next time when application opens, you can load it again if you want. But uh, by default, in drawable uh, component, you would not uh, get functionality you would not be able to m move for example uh, the box you uh, when you, when I try to select the box I just uh, it draws another uh, another rectangle and um, yeah it, it returns back the response so if you'd like to add uh, option to to select the uh, rectangle and move it or resize then in this case you would need to go uh, to drawable canvas uh, script and uh, TypeScript file and uh, add the logic here in uh, implementation of this um, of this component. Okay, so let's let's see and let's see how other component runs, uh, and let's switch to uh, Streamlit image label. Uh, in terms of the Streamlit component structure, it's uh, exactly the same. This uh, I have a main script where I, I initialize the component, I process the result, then uh, there is a separate uh, package folder for the component. Yeah, uh, this uh, init file, uh, init script that uh, wraps uh, acts as a Python wrapper for for the component. Uh, it's a standard uh, way to implement Streamlit components, right? And uh, yeah, the same thing like I mentioned before in package JSON, I upgraded TypeScript to 484, the latest version, so that I'm able to uh, run the component locally. Otherwise, I'm getting errors from Fabric.js uh, that TypeScript uh, uh, syntax is not understood. And the main, uh, if you look back uh, in, uh, in in readme file of the components, yeah, this. Uh, this um, just not much uh, description over here comparing to uh, drawable canvas component. Uh, it's quite well described. Uh, but on the other hand, um, Streamlit image label is a simpler component, and probably uh, if you need a tool that would uh, uh, would help, if you're looking for a tool that would allow you to render rectangles on an, on a document like on an invoice and uh, highlight the fields then with Streamlit image label component it will be easier because uh, uh, it's not focused on drawing different uh, shapes on top of canvas but it's more it's focused on uh, labeling and annotating images with rectangles so it's uh, closer to uh, like annotation tool and it's not like a tool to draw the shapes yeah and if you look into the main uh, component implementation file Streamlit image label TypeScript uh, for example, this add box handler uh, method, uh, which is responsible to add a uh, new rectangle when uh, you hit uh, the button to add a uh, new rectangle, right? And this uh, uh, you operate directly here in this uh, example with uh, Fabric.js API. Uh, and for example, on top of Canvas, you add uh, Fabric.js uh, rectangle and you pass different uh, parameters over here. So 
Uh, with this implementation, it's a bit easier to add uh, additional customization for uh, Canvas objects implemented with Fabric.js uh, and, and so on, I believe. All right, so let's uh, see how it runs. Uh, the same thing, we, we start um, uh, component. Okay, component is started, so we can close that window. Okay, it started, and now we start uh, Streamlit application. Like that. Okay, it runs. Application is loading. We have one sample image over here, and uh, this component loaded, and I have uh, I saved uh, before I saved uh, some uh, rectangles on top of that image, and uh, uh, it was loaded as well. So now, for example, I could uh, uh, move it, select and move, and it's being updated over here, or I could add another bounding box and uh, resize it like that and then move it like this and uh, I can save it and so on yeah and uh, I can do remove it reset and clear so do different stuff All right and if I go to back to the application this uh, image directory so this is where the image is uh, saved and uh, as soon as you add rectangles and you click save then all the data is exported into this xml file and next time when you open application for the same image if a component finds that uh, this xml file with um, coordinates for the rectangles then it loads this xml file and uh, displays uh, displays the rectangles okay so to summarize, uh, we saw two uh, components that you could use uh, to do image annotation uh, with Streamlit. The first one is a drawable uh, canvas. Uh, I believe it's more suitable when you want to allow user to draw different types of um, shapes on top of the image. The second one is image labeling and uh, it's more suitable for uh, annotation tasks like when you have receipts or invoices and you want to display boxes uh, when you get data from OCR, for example, you want to display boxes on top of those images and you can click um, the box and get information which box is selected and uh, add a label for that uh, box and so on. So thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. Next time, hopefully this was useful. Thanks.